sticking with Elon Musk specifically, we're going to, the tech billionaire has mocked Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau over Google's AI debacle. Now, Musk posted a collage of photos of Trudeau with the caption, can't believe Gemini made these unfair pics of Trudeau. The joke being there that these photos of Trudeau were actually real. He has done blackface and he's worn a traditional Indian hat before, among other cultural insensitivities. Canada's leader ridiculed for cultural appropriation in the past. And Elon Musk has criticised Justin Trudeau before. Tweeting last year, the Canadian Prime Minister is trying to silence free speech. He wrote, in response to News Canada's broadcast watchdog announced that podcasts and streaming services must register with the government for regulatory control. Musk said, Trudeau is trying to crush free speech in Canada. Shameful. And speaking of free speech, this week Elon Musk has been nominated for a Nobel Peace Prize. Maris Nielsen, a Norwegian MP, nominated the Tesla and SpaceX boss for his commitment to defending free speech in a polarised world. That was Elon Musk's entire strategy when he acquired X in 2022. He wanted to make sure that there was a platform that allowed free speech and didn't censor right-wing or even centrist commentary. I'll start with you, Steve. What did you think about this? Elon Musk going after Justin Trudeau yet again. Everything is on free speech and then he gets nominated for a Nobel Prize. Yes. I mean, I think chasing free speech and that being the goal is the best goal. I don't think a peace prize is what you should get because th- what you won't get is peace. You, sh- you should get proper debate, but it's not going to be peaceful. And that's, no. that's the goal, really, in a sense. Um, I, I think that, uh, yeah, trying to make sure that there's a platform where everyone can express an opinion. That's right. You should be OK with someone saying something mm. you disagree agree with. Someone can ask a question that you can answer no to. This should be okay. Mm. And yet somehow we're getting so hypersensitive that you're offended that a question exists. So I, I definitely back him on that. But I don't think he's got a stand chance of getting the Peace Prize. What did you think, Ray? Well, I mean, I'm a free speech absolutist. So I think that anything should be able to go. And clearly what Trudeau has done is effectively trying to bring in a lot of these tech companies under t- uh, strict uh, regulatory control. It's happening over in Canada. It's also happening uh, in the US, it's happening in the UK with the digital market. Markets and competitions authority bill effectively governments trying to control these tech companies and regulate them even further and in a way in which that can effectively stifle freedom of expression on these platforms i think it's terrible i think elon musk is genuinely one of the most incredible businessmen that i've seen across <laughs> the world and you know what it is he actually advocates for what he believes in and that mm. is freedom of expression he once posted a hayek quote it was an austrian economist i think he's brilliant what i do what i will say is that i, I, I do agree i think that maybe a peace prize isn't quite there. Look, I mean, free speech isn't about peace. It's not about agreeing with each Mm. other. It's about disagreeing with each other and having a marketplace Mm. of ideas where we can weed out the bad arguments. So one of my favourite things about Elon Musk, though, is there are some people who get really upset about Bill... uh, Quentin? uh, No, um, Bill Gates. Saying that, oh, he's just some sort of eco-man and he's trying to put chips in us all. Meanwhile, Elon (laughs) is making electric cars and putting chips in people, and yet he gets away with it. It's brilliant. Because he's unapologetically himself. I think that's... That's why he obviously took over X. He knew that there was, you know, a market for a platform that would be uncensored and he was obsessed with it. But going back to the Trudeau thing, I think it's just been so entertaining for everyone that we have this tech billionaire weighing in on politics, not even US politics, but Canadian Canadian politics. politics. What do you guys think of the fact that so many people are turning to Elon Musk's page to weigh in on his thoughts on politics. I think it's brilliant because ultimately he understands the way in which the market works and the way mm. the way in which you should be able to respond to market demand. And he's been incredibly successful at it. What's also really interesting is that a lot of big tech giants often actually argue for regulation, for further regulation. You know why? Because big tech companies can absorb those costs, whereas smaller companies often mm. can't. So effectively they're remaining incumbent and stopping other smaller companies from being able to compete with them. Elon Musk doesn't do that. He wants more competition. He wants a free market and he wants to allow people to have that kind of economic choice. I think Elon Musk is is in in many ways not a hypocrite in in comparison to other uh, larger tech billionaires. And I actually think that he's very sound on a lot of these issues. I mean, he clearly is on the right side of the culture war. He clearly Mm. understands the way in which this kind of cultural Marxist woke ideology has permeated many of our public institutions across both the US and the UK. And I actually think that his criticisms 
of Trudeau are absolutely correct. Sometimes he's trolling us all, though. Do you not think? Sometimes he must be thinking, yeah. if I send this, this will wind everyone up, send, and then he has a great night. Yeah, but I think it's funny. Yeah. He's oh, brilliant. Yeah. And he's, 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 got a, he's a bit Trump-esque in that regard. You know, yeah. he makes sense half the time, and the other time he's just trying to spark a debate or spark, you know, a headline to make everyone laugh or whatever it may be. But... He is entertainment, to say the least, and when he came out and said that he was no longer a Democrat and was probably going to vote Republican, but, you know, it's kind of insinuated that he was more centre-right, it got headlines around the world. It's just so interesting when these, you know, big names that are not in politics come out and say, I'm voting this way, I'm voting for... Because he was keen on DeSantis before he dropped out. I'm going to vote for DeSantis. And everyone went wild. And they have these huge followings. And, of course, people are going to sit there and be like, oh, Elon Musk is voting for DeSantis. He's voting red. Maybe I will. And it's just crazy that he has this influence. But it kind of begs the question, do you guys think that he would ever get into politics himself? That's or not born in America, though, so he can't be uh, oh, president. Oh, no. He's South African, of course. Yeah. Oh, president. But, I mean, look, I think what's interesting is that he himself is, a, I think, an outsider commentator in politics. Mm. As soon as people like Elon Musk or even, you know, anybody enters the political sphere, they're under such a different light and such different scrutiny. Whereas, actually, when you're outside of politics, like us, we can chat about politics all day. But <laughs> if, if we were to enter it ourselves, I think it would be a slightly different story. Mm. And I think that his, his talent, his unique selling point is that he is a critic of politicians and ultimately a commentator in many ways. Do you think that he will achieve his goal in making X a platform, first of all, a profitable platform that does respect free speech? Is there a world that we have that? I think as a, as a as a digital platform, it can respect free speech if it's not banning people. Yeah. Whether that has a greater impact on the rest of the world and the way that discourse works... I doubt. I don't, I'm, I'm more of a sceptic there because I just think there is such power in being the victim. Oh, I'm so offended by the thing you've yeah. said. I win the argument by being offended rather than countering your point. I think that's a... We were all addicted to that. It's going to be hard to wean. I'm an optimist. Oh, we've got I two, think... uh -oh. two opposing sides. <laughs> I think that he will do it, and ultimately the reason why is because he has the power to. He yeah. owns the platform, and he. I, I do believe that Elon Musk genuinely does believe in the right to freedom of expression, mm. and he believes in what, you know, J.S. Mill once called the, the marketplace of ideas, this idea that we have a multitude of different ideas coming from different people, and that's the beauty of human minds, right? And they'll all come together... And, and they'll be able to s express their opinions freely in order for us to compete with those ideas and effectively find the best one. So I think that Elon Musk does genuinely believe that. I worry that the problem will come with governments. And yeah. actually, if the government decide that they want to further regulate these platforms... if So in the UK, we've just got the Digital Markets and Competitions Authority Bill. The US are about to pass something very similar where they're effectively going to be over-regulating these platforms. That will then mean that the government will be effectively telling Telling these companies like X or, or, or other, other online platforms like Meta that they cannot uh, have absolute free speech. And I think that mm. that will be a problem. So I think he, he will be successful, but the problem will ultimately come and lie with government. So he has the vision, but we just don't know if he's going to be able to be given the resources. But the and if he doesn't have the resources, who does? The richest man <laughs> in the world. Come on. And the, and the consensus is we don't think he's going to win the Nobel Peace Prize. <laughs> yeah. No, <exactly. laughs> definitely not.